Hey, Jinx! Truck stop! It's the most wonderful time of the month. Hmm, I should have saved that for the December box. <laughs> it's time to put the October batch of knives to rest and dive into the November box. Now lately, I've been doing my review videos separately, but there were only three pocket knives in last month's box, so I don't think this should take very long, especially since one of them is a Stockman. Classic folder. Um, so to do a review on this is just to do a review on Stockman in general, I think. So I'm just going to point out a couple of the things about this Stockman that I liked and disliked. I really like the acrylic approach. Uh, embedding stuff in acrylic to make scales, that's cool. I like it. I'm not so much into the shredded money look, though. That's kind of... <laughs> eh, it's a novelty thing, and that's fine. But I would not take this with me to a desert island. I only used this knife in those moments when my nails were long enough to. I just could not open it with freshly cut nails. That's an indictment on classic folding slip joint knives in general. <laughs> and it's a thing that I guess people didn't deal with in the past. Maybe nail clipping is a modern invention? I don't know. Anyway... So, there are three blades to it, and I tried to use all of them, eh, roughly evenly, but I never really found that any of them offered anything more than the other. It was just like, hey, I haven't used this one in a while. So I think what that means is that the Stockman knife is just not for me when it comes to EDC carry. I've been saying for a while I do want to carry a classic folder, maybe I get a locking one, uh, like the tribal lock looks pretty attractive. Anyway, this knife has a little quirk to it, though. I don't know if it's unique to this one or if it's a Stockman thing. <laughs> um, so there are three blades, but there are two tracks. The small spade blade goes in its own track. The long and slender clip point blade, which I really liked. I used that one a lot. It was, it was great. Anyway, it's got its own track. The sheath sweat blade sort of has to sandwich its way in between at this off angle. And as a consequence, it rubs. So, for example, if you look on the clip point blade towards the end there, you see those scratches? That's from rubbing up against the sheep's foot blade. I don't like that. I like my blades to be shiny and pretty. I liked the hand feel of it. The curvature is uh, sexy, and I like the way that um, the blades sort of go off in their own direction. <laughs> it's especially pronounced with the little spade blade. You see how it sort of follows the contour of the curvature, and that actually made it pretty comfortable to use. Uh, I did not use it to spay any animals. I used it to open boxes. Anyway, that's the Rough Rider Easy Money Stockman. Next one I'll talk about is the PM3. I'll try to make this as quick as possible. There are a ton of videos reviewing Spyderco knives. Um, videos made by people that are much more talented and well-spoken than I am. If you want to learn more about this knife, I implore you to find one of those and watch it. I have very few complaints about this knife, um, except, you know what, I think it's kind of too light for me. <laughs> I mean, it's it, it sort of gave me flashbacks to the OG Benchmade bug out, where uh, it just felt like a toy, and this one does a little bit too. Not as bad, but yeah, it kind of does. But it was awesome using a knife that has the, um, not the access lock, the compression lock. Um, just like the access lock, though, there's a timing and a force of the flicking to it that you just kind of get used to otherwise oh let's see I got used to it again <laughs> it, 
There we go. You release too quickly and it doesn't close all the way. That's just something you gotta get used to if you want to operate it one-handed, or you can just let it drop shut like so. Anyway, that's the PM3 lightweight, and all I have to really say about that, I used it quite a lot. I've got the second most amount of pocket time. The buck trunk stole the show, in my opinion. This knife is awesome. I'm not huge into cleavers. I've carried a lot of folding cleaver style knives, and I didn't particularly like any of them. But I like this one. <laughs> it's a little bit slimmer in, in this dimension than the other pocket cleavers I've carried. It still sticks out quite a bit, but I can forgive it for that. The pivot is nice and smooth. It is flickable with a small movement of the wrist. I still don't understand the mix and match when it comes to the washers. Um, one of them is nylon or Teflon, and the other one is phosphor bronze, uh, I think, or possibly bearings. It, it's, it's strange, but it works, so <laughs> whatever. Uh, it stayed on centering. It's got the recessed pocket clip and recessed screws, and I like that. The jimping works very well for me because it's a perfect size for my hand. More manly men might find the handle a little bit too small for them, but that was not a problem for me. I used this knife a lot, and I gotta say, I found some limitations because of the shape, you know, the, the whole cleaver thing. Um, it, it's good at cutting and slicing, just not for stabbing. So I did have a little bit of trouble uh, cutting down some of the boxes and cardboard and stuff that I, I did throughout the month just getting it in there. But once I did, it shoop, came right down through that cardboard. So I really liked this knife. It's such a good design. It was a little difficult to take out of the pocket, actually, now that I think about it. Um, it just sort of wanted to grab onto it, so you had to, like, <clears throat> jerk it out. One of the things I liked the most about the PM3 was the contouring on the scales. The buck trunk did a little bit of that, too, cutting into the G10 here. Probably the only thing that would make this even better is if they recessed the scales, but uh, it, you know, that's not something that affects the function. It just looks nice to me. Anyway, say goodbye to the Stockman and the PM3 Lightweight, and say hello to the November box. Funny thing, normally I get a notification that the box has shipped. It'll be there Friday. And then Friday continues. And then at some point it says, oh, never mind. It'll be their Saturday. <laughs> and usually it is. Sometimes Sunday. Sometimes the following Monday. Kind of depends on how busy things are. This time, it actually told me it's going to be here Saturday. And then a little while later, it was like, wait, never mind. Actually, we're going to get it to you on Friday. And I was like, that's the opposite. Well, obviously, it's going to switch back and be like, oh, yeah, Saturday. We were right the first time. But no, it arrived today. Friday. Secretary DeJoy is good for something. <laughs> ah, just kidding. It arrived FedEx. Anyway, fuck trunk. Let's do this. Didn't quite get the seam. There we go. Fuck trunk. You are retired! Yep. Oh my, I like what I see. Oh, there's your preview. <laughs> I screwed up last month. There was one more sticker that I was going to feature at the end of the video, and I totally forgot. It's Harry Voorhees and an orange SMKW logo. He's got the hockey mask and the machete. This sticker is awesome, and it's huge. So to make up for it, Harry Voorhees will hang out for this unboxing. I know we all saw it. ZT. Zero Tolerance. This is going to be the General's Knife. These knives are very expensive, but from what I've heard, they're also excellent. I actually don't own a ZT knife until now. <laughs> so when I spotted the logo, I got really excited. I'm just going to open it now. I'm just going to go right out with it. What the hell is that? There's a... Uh product and the catalog. Ooh, it's like a little accordion. Hey, 
Hello. I'm a ZT knife. Important information about your ZT folding knife. Good God. <laughs> I won't read it. I want the knife. Oh. Oh, check that out. Little bag of candies clipped right to it. That made a cool sound. Well, it is black G10, I believe. Pocket clip is short and stubby. That's okay. It was on the bug out, and I liked it. Uh, my gut feeling is that should work pretty well. We've got a black back spacer. Pretty neat jimping. Ooh, that's grippy, too. That's some good G10. Nice knurling. Anyway, smooth pivot. It's got a liner lock. Um... Not the kind you can access easily, but eh, it's all right. See, the liners are thick enough that you can actually grab onto it, and that's good. It is assisted open. Flipper tab is curved in just the right direction. Looks like a little shark fin. You're gonna need a bigger knife. Ken Onion Design. This is the model O350. I have heard of the O350. Is that the one where they have like the urban camo striping on the blade sometimes. I actually would have liked to have gotten that one. Kind of a novelty, though. Uh, what kind of steel is this? Hmm. Oh, it says right here. S30V. Okay. It's got thumb studs, too. They work very well. That was easy. It feels very solid. I am finally a ZT owner. Nice. Gerber! We can, we've been getting a lot of Gerber stuff from them. Hmm, this box is rather thick. This may or may not be a knife. It might be a tool of some kind. Ah, oh, sweet. It's a multi-tool. Hello, I'm a Gerber. I don't own too many multi-tools. Just a few. Uh, off the top of my head, I've got a Gerber dime that I got from a TSA confiscated bag from eBay. <laughs> I got some of those Ozark Trail multi-tools that are actually pretty good for the money. And I got an old Coleman multi-tool that I bought when I was in college. Urgh. Urgh. Nice. One of the things I like in my multi-tools is when the pliers are sprung so that uh, it does that. This thing is huge. I can hardly wrap my hands around it. <laughs> oh, got all kinds of goodies in the handles. I would pull out all of them and show you one by one, but that would take forever. Got a spacer with the Gerber logo on it. Does it do anything? Oh, there's like a little slider here. Hmm. There's a little teeny tiny unlock symbol for that direction. But what does it unlock? I don't know. What in the world is this? Oh! <laughs> Scissors. The black thing on it. I like the way they go back in. They sort of invert. <laughs> uh, I get it now. It won't go back in without unlocking it. So it's sort of um, not a slip joint. That's cool. And we got some screwdrivers, and here's a little serrated blade. More screwdrivers and other stuff, too. Don't know what it's called, though. We'll find out later. We've got a cancer box. <laughs> Nothing on it. It's all white. No idea what this could be. My favorite kind of knife. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That is too funny. So a while back, I opened a box from Chicago... Knife Works? Chicago Knife Cutlery? The Chicago video I made. And I mentioned one of the knives that I bought from them. They said, oh, we it, the quality's terrible. We're just going to refund you and not send it. It was a knife like this one. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I wanted to get it because it's long and slender, and it's got a kind of Spanish-style curve to the handle. I just wanted to check it out. So now I got one, and this one is made by a company called Canon. You can see a little uh, Fleur de Lis and an actual Canon on it. Um, it looks like we got laminate wood handles painted in gray and black. This looks way better than the one that I ordered, which was like $4. <laughs> uh, we got some scalloped file working and a little bit of patterning on the bolsters as well. It is a slip joint. Very long and slender blade and it makes a cool sound when you close it. Well, now I'm glad I didn't get that one in the mail because here we go. <laughs> All right, candy, candy, candy. And Harry Voorhees's little brother. Hey, we saw a knife by this brand before. It was that paratrooper knife that I got a couple of months ago, Benchmark. So another Benchmark knife. I'll take it. Well, it's black G10 with some streaks in it. Kind of looks like when somebody's running fast in a cartoon, like wind lines, right? <laughs> oh, interesting pocket clip. Highly polished steel with no visible screws. Deep carry. That's interesting. You know those pocket clips you see that people get where it's got like a skull on it or whatever? Kind of reminds me of that. It doesn't stand off very far from the scale, though. Um, well, we'll see how it goes. That's, that's different. That'll be interesting. It probably screws in from the inside. We'll find out. It's got a flipper tab. Ooh. We got a slot cut out at the top there. A little bit of a ramp here. Lots of jimping. Feels fine. This will be an interesting one to check out. It's a liner lock that is not open assisted. That is just very smooth. Uh, can I see what's in there? Probably bearings. Hmm. Is it drop shut? Yeah. <laughs> Benchmark. You hit it out of the park. Yeah, that's bearings. I think I can see some shiny brass going on in there. Anyway, yeah, I look forward to carrying the Benchmark. Got a rather big box from Browning, which has a, a deer head for its logo. Hmm, I don't know if this is a knife either. It's, again, kind of big for one. But I don't know, we'll find out. Cutlery that's made by gun companies tend not to be very good. Let's see if this bucks the trend. Oh! It's a tin. Hmm, very shiny tin. What could it be? It is a knife. <laughs> Excellent. I've well, got a booklet with all the warnings and cautions, sharpening instructions. It's in one of those fake velvet looking things. And it has a... Well, it's liner locked. It's very light. I like the, uh, the wood... It's kind of got like a walnut look to it. Oh, cool! The pocket clip's got the logo in it, too. That's nice. I like that. It is deep ride. It's got a nice detent, good centering. No flipper tab, just thumb studs. Very small diameter knurled thumb studs on both sides. I think that's Teflon it's riding on, but not bad, not bad at all, yeah, very fidgetable, the model 0309, and it comes in a tin, I think I had one of these once before, the Smith & Wesson Military and Police Bodyguard, I definitely got one of these two or three months ago, I don't think I'm going to bother opening this one even, <laughs> Let's put you up there. Oh, I like the looks of this one so far. Marbles, a so-so brand that some people love. And it's got something in it that's tortoise shell related. This is a really great look. Um, now, I don't think I would 
really ethically want a knife that had actual tortoise shell in it. <laughs> yeah, for ethical reasons. But synthetic tortoise shell has really been mastered for a long time. They used to make it out of celluloid way back in the 30s and probably before. So, it's a smaller piece, probably. Whoa. Yeah, check that out. It's that, that whiskey and chocolate mixture with a little bit of translucence. That looks great. And it's a lady leg. I like this lady leg knife because it's a bit thicker up here. I like my women with a little meat on their bones. <laughs> so, ooh. There's some nasty looking stuff up on this blade. I'll have to clean that off. <laughs> it's the Marbles Lady Leg Slip Joint Folder. Well, that looks fantastic. Okay, we have one more item. And it is by Case. WR Case. I, I'm curious to see if this one is suffering from quality issues like they have been as of late. <laughs> All right. We get uh, brown paper. Oh! Wait, what is this? At first I thought it might have been a canoe configuration because of that bolster, but normally there's a, a symmetrical bolster on the other side, but that is not the case. <laughs> get it? The logo is an American flag, and it is a very beautiful red bone, red dyed bone. You know, looking at the back, I can see that familiar high polish that I like. So this might be an example of Case yeah, making a little bit of a comeback. I see a little bit of a gap here, though. Oh, maybe a mixed bag. So this, yeah, okay, it's a trapper. with your clip point blade, and instead of a spade blade, you get a pen blade. Okay. Well, I'm never gonna complain about getting a case knife. I still like them. They're very shiny and beautiful. Quite a good spread. I was gonna say, um, you know, for a while I've been kind of wanting a box that had eh, more quality over quantity. Probably back when I was receiving a whole bunch of Smith & Wesson stuff. <laughs> like, two or three of them in the same box. I'm like, yeah, I kind of want something good now. <laughs> I appreciate quantity over quality here and there. Last month, I definitely did get quality over quantity. Now, this one is kind of a mixed bag. Uh, the ZT knife, I know, is quality. The case knife seems to be good quality, but then I also have a lot of other things to play with, including the Smith & Wesson bodyguard. So I would call this box a success. Yeah, like I said, I'm guessing this is the General's box knife. I'm guessing the case is probably the uh, Officer's Club knife. Uh, there's probably another one in the Officer's Club level. But what? Probably the multi-tool. And then the rest, I'm guessing, are the NCO's box. Would you like to know more? In the GI box. The Browning Wood Liner Lock. That's this one. Stainless steel drop point blade with a satin finish. It's a manual opener with a thumb stud. Tip down only deep ride pocket clip. $14.99. Next on the list is the Marbles. Imitation Tortoise Shell Lady Leg, featuring 440A steel, match strike pulls, brass pins, brass liners, nickel silver ringed bolsters, and a 2 inch clip point blade. $6.99. That's a really good price for something like this. Then we get the Smith & Wesson M&P Bodyguard, 8CR 13MOV. Manual flipper with thumb studs, blah de blah Already reviewed it. Already got it. $9.99. Now, I remember it wasn't that bad of a knife, actually. It was, it was, it was okay. The Canon Spanish Toothpick. Yeah, I knew it was Spanish. That's 
Cool, I was right about something. The blade is four and an eighth inch long. That's pretty long. <laughs> oh, the handles are pack of wood. Overall, when it's open, it's nine inches long. Yeah. It's only $5.99. Wow. Well, that, that's a bargain. Next on the list is the Benchmark. This is called the Quick Liner Lock. It's a stainless steel, whatever that means. Black G10 handles, tip up only. Pocket clip, $9.99. That's a pretty good deal, too. Wow. Oh. GI Box is rocking it this month, in my opinion. In the Officer's Club box, we get the Gerber. Oh, I was right. <laughs> this is called the Suspension NXT Multi-Tool. It's boasting an increased tool count compared to what? Is there an older model that has fewer? I don't know. Oh, it says there's 15 tools in it. $35.99. Hmm. See, I don't really know enough about multi-tools to know if that's worth it or not. I'm just not a multi-tool guy. But I will be this month. Also included in the Officer's Club box is the Case Knife. They're calling this one the Dark Red Bone Copperhead. Oh, so it's not a trapper. It's a copperhead. Mirror polished, true sharp surgical steel blades. <laughs> yeah, surgical steel, whatever that means. The handles are dark red jigged bone. And you got your usual accoutrements. The brass pins and liners. Nickel silver bolsters and shield. Yeah, 3.8 inch clip point blade. Doesn't tell you the dimensions of the other blade though. $59.99. Hmm. You know, when I'm looking at the blade at this angle, let me see if I can... Yeah, see, do you see an issue with the blade there? Right around this area. Uh, there's some deformities there. Hmm. That's not good. That's not good at all. Hmm. Shame on you, Case. The quality problems persist. <laughs> and yes, the only item in the General's box is the ZT-0350. Features a CPMS 30V drop point blade with a recurve to it. Uh, t black tungsten DLC coating. Uh, I've had a couple knives with DLC coating. It's good. It's very, very smooth. It's nice. It's an assisted flipper with speed safe technology. I don't know what that means. Four position pocket clip, so you can put it pretty much anywhere. Weighs a whopping 6.2 ounces. So yeah, that was one of my early observations was, man, this thing is heavy. $168. That's actually one of their less expensive models, believe it or not. Thank you very much, Captain Tomahawk. Thanks for watching with your friend, JJ Jinx, Truck 